travellers. Hello. What are we doing this, this time, Mark? A lot of people are asking us, what about disasters? Not too big, not too nasty. You know, things like, yeah. should I go to Pompeii? Is it nice? Is it a lovely place to visit? And when should I just about avoid that massive volcanic eruption? So we need to think about places you could go to see something a bit cool, a bit nasty, mm. but to come out alive. This is a thing, you know, everybody wants to go. I want to see the Titanic. Do you really want to be in a rowing boat watching people screaming? Do you really want to go to Pompeii? Do you want to see Krakatoa go pop? At a very safe distance, don't recommend it. Like battles, it's upsetting, but uh, I think we'll do our best to recommend where you should and certainly shouldn't go. You know, I like my Romans. And you do like your Romans? Gonna, they like you? Yeah. 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 No, no, I like Romans. You know, little fellas, hook nose, skirts, we can always spot them. <laughs> and uh, I thought, should we go to Rome? Well, mm -hmm. no. Let's pop into somewhere, somewhere a bit less well known and enjoy mm -hmm. something. Um, do you know the city of, oh, how do I pronounce it? Camulodinum? Camulodinum. You know Cam yes. Where would you, where's that? Do you know where that one is today? Oh, is it it's Colchester? the beautiful, yeah, sunny town yes. of Colchester. That's yes. the one. <laughs> Why would we go there? We'd go there to see the one of the largest Roman towns in Britain. We love to see mm -hmm. the temples again, some of the biggest ever built here. Um, yeah. It's got the only chariot circus in Britain. You know, mm -hmm. full on Ben Hur, mm -hmm. brilliant. Just mm -hmm. if you want to watch the edge of a disaster, get yourself there in. Oh, hang on, I have to count it. AD sixty. Yeah, AD mm -hmm. 60, have yeah. a mooch around, and then just leave to go up onto the hillsides before the huge Celtic tribes come rushing down and burn the place <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's I have to, to apologise there, Ed. I'm really sorry. I used the C word. I said so, kill. I didn't mean. Yes. I meant British tribes. You want sorry, to watch sorry, a sorry. city burn. Um, the only thing I know about that really <laughs> is, of course, the base of the Temple of Claudius is now the part of the keep of Colchester Castle, which was the largest Norman keep. And uh, didn't the Romans hold out in the cellars of it or something for a time? They sort of used it as their... <laughs> Last strong yeah, point. It gets well, a bit nasty. A bit nasty at the end. Yeah, so it's a battle, we'll, Mark. We'll Mark you can't two. recommend yeah. battles for people. No. Battles are nasty places. Bad things happen Sorry. there. Okay. They'll go. What would you go for then? They'll go anywhere. Oh, I'd go somewhere <laughs> far worse. I'd like to go and see Snowball Earth or Slush Ball Earth. Yes, yes, great stuff. It's um, it was a theory. I think it's sort of well, I don't know. It's not. It's not. We're historians. It's not really our field or archaeologists. Um, it's long, long, long before humans. So about six hundred and forty to eight hundred million years ago, the Earth had an ice age. We're still in an ice age, but we can talk about that another time. But it had a big, big ice age where there was supposedly frozen water all the way to the equator. And life had already been around, so it's nearly a billion years ago. Life had already been around for about two and a half billion years before then, but it was sort of microbes. And it survived somehow with an ice age that goes on a couple of hundred million years. Um, supposedly, perhaps at the equator, there were some bits of open water or there were sort of bits, warm bits around thermal vents. But Earth was locked in an ice age all the way down to the equator for all that time. And I want to go and have a look at it. It won't be very pleasant. Okay. I'm fully equipped, though, with my Royal Navy duffel coat, which I think could, uh, could you know, survive, uh, help me survive against anything. Um, and I'm going to go and have a look at Snowball Earth, because I want to look at a huge disaster. And it's a miracle it ever ended. It's supposedly volcanoes <laughs> building up CO2 until greenhouse effect, and finally we snapped out of it. But we could still be in it. What you want to do, then, is take one of those inflatable lilos and bob about in the middle of an almost entirely frozen earth. That's what yeah, well, the, That's your well the other idea is slush ball earth, that it wasn't all frozen, that it was sort of slushy stuff. But, um, mm. yeah, you know, I, I think a lilo and, <laughs> and a paddle, you know, yeah. go and have a look. Yeah, and there's no, there's, no even, there's not even any nasty things that'll eat you. It's just sort of, there's a few oh, microbes that are surviving here oh. and there. And they're our ancestors. I like to meet the ancestors. We've, we've run into the 17th century because I'm going to mm. do what a lot of people do when they want to go away for adventure. I'm heading to America. Yeah. I'm heading to the first ever British town, Jamestown. 
brilliant place. Lots of little streets, taverns, little church. Beautiful wood-built place. You might like to have a little look at it. Thriving economy. It's, uh, it's the way our new uh, colony is going to be. Everything's going to be perfect. We're going to grow tobacco. We're going to sell it around the ground. You get destroyed around in a hat like this. You just got to be a little bit careful if you go there. Sort of walk around, enjoy yeah. the time, go for a meal or something. Uh, make sure you get out just before 1622. Okay, mm -hmm. so keep an eye on the time. Keep an eye mm -hmm. on the year. Get out before then because it all goes pear-shaped. And um, there's lots of really thick books on it, but you could um, you could pricey it down to uh, they get attacked by Indians, run out of food, and eat each other. That'd do really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think that's a, that's a great danger of trying to uh, transplant the idea of nice English villages uh, everywhere else on the world. <laughs> it doesn't always work, does it? You also it have to watch it as well. <laughs> We're going to have to do something for people on calendars because you're, you know, checking your calendar. Yeah. If you use our calendar, it's 1622. If you use their calendar, it's 1621. So there's a very good chance you're going to get it wrong and get yourself gnawed on. So do it, be careful. It's a huge problem with time travel as well, isn't it? I mean, it's like, you know, Snowball Earth. Just I'm sort of I'm not a geologist, uh, but even they don't know precisely. You know, you could go back into a sort of, um, yeah, and it'd be perfectly fine. And then, you know... <laughs> couple of million years before you'd be in trouble you've got you yeah you've got to be very careful it's always worth having a peek before you travel anywhere i always say hmm open the door step out go back in don't be embarrassed to go home that's my yes <laughs> it's more sort of environmental disaster i'm interested in okay. uh okay. i've got okay. to admit this this is for a personal reason i'd like to see the great storm of october 1987 uh, because I missed it oh, okay. Uh, okay. at the time. I, I was a young man, uh, recently arrived at university, and I had um, I had drunk a small sherry, perhaps, and uh, I completely missed it. Uh, I remember waking up the next day <laughs> to absolute chaos. Uh, something like 90% of the trees in southern England were ripped up, um, and um, there was that, uh, do you remember the windmill? That went so quickly that the uh, the brakes were on in the windmill. It went so quickly that sparks came out of the mechanism and uh, nearly burnt it down. I think they managed to rescue it. Absolute chaos. But I would like to see it because it's one of those things that you had years of everyone going, "Oh, remember the night of the great storm? Oh, oh I remember. You know, I remember the neighbour flying past the window and cars hurtling down the road. Uh, nothing. No, no. <laughs> A fairly wonderful. Disaster, if you can call them that. I mean, there's always a sad edge to it and there's always a little bit of tragedy. Mm. But um, let's go down to London. Let's walk the streets of Georgian London, late Georgian London, 1814. Mm. Napoleonic Wars are coming to the end. Everyone's waving little flags going, hey, we've defeated the ogre. Isn't it good? Everything's lovely. And you might think, I'm going to go and look at that London. I'm going to parade about. I'm going to... Um, enjoy somewhere like Tottenham Court Road, which you think, I'd like to see it how yeah. it was. It, it's beautiful. Now, the slight problem with Tottenham Court Road is it's, uh, it is all right then, but it's right on the edge of a major slum called St Giles. Mm -hmm. And um, oh. you might want one of these with you. You need your beer mug. Have it to hand, because mm -hmm. that area, 1814, what the back of it? Yes, it's at the back, back of the slum. Mm. There's the Mew & Co Horseshoe Brewery. And the Mew & Co Horseshoe <laughs> Brewery has one of the largest mm. beer vats, so a huge tub, in the whole of London. Mm -hmm. And it bursts and creates what they call the London Beer Flood. <laughs> there is beer everywhere, because not only does that vat break, mm. but as it breaks, the shockwave breaks one of their storage tanks. Best guess is that about 250,000 gallons of beer flood through St Giles and down Tottenham Court Road. I mean, that's something oh. to see. Have your, have your mug ready and see what you can scoop up. It's... We should recreate that. <laughs> I think that'd, that'd be a, a lovely is... celebration of history. It does have a sad side because uh, they think at least mm. eight people were drowned in it. And in a sad twist of irony, uh, five of those were actually attending someone else's wake when a wall of beer <laughs> came through their cellar. But you can't have everything, can you? <laughs> no, you can't. That's a way to go, I expect. Oh. Uh, so I recommend... From a distance, viewing the Great London Beer Flood. A beer army, I think that was. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a lovely one. So, 
So uh, what we're really mm. saying is pick your disasters carefully. Uh, mm. Make sure we don't want them too nasty. Make sure they're more impressive than nasty. Get your dates yes. right so that you don't turn up too late and missed it, or right mm. in the middle of it and get eaten. And uh, mm. enjoy enjoying seeing what history has to offer. Sounds like a fun a fun plan to me, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Fun is the operative word, but it sounds like a plan. Now, there we go. Just back from a bit of a time travel myself. Anyway, if you've enjoyed uh, Ed and my little conversations, 